I got the names of your many shows that uh, we could have. <laughs> okay. All right. I've got a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The top ten. Nice. Okay. Okay. So we're rolling. It's okay. uh, great to have you guys in the studio. And uh, you're taking a look at uh, Dr. Tom Hackett as he scrolls through his uh, his index to the world. He's pretending and, to uh, be a millennial. He's trying to. Uh -huh. He's denying okay, being boomer. a boomer. He That's is. right. Do not call him a boomer. <laughs> okay. Boomer. You're in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, the okay boomer thing is like, okay, now yeah. we're dividing up on age well, and what camp are you in? If you're in this camp, you uh, believe uh, certain things. And, then, and and the good Dr. Dan Rose, who does Got Therapy on this network, yes. uh, actually said that uh, if you're in that category, you're probably pushing to the right a little more than the other groups and so forth and so on. So he's trying to label me and put me in a box. Ah, and so I, what I box were you in, Mike? Well, that's a good question, Tom, but uh, you can't – don't fence me in because <laughs> I'm not in a don't box. Fence me, bro. Don't, oh, <laughs> don't fence me, bro. Don't fence me, bro. Don't fence me, bro. And I and I I don't know I don't know where I land I you know I just kind of I make up my mind about various things and it doesn't matter about camps I don't I, I, think, well, I don't pledge I allegiance that, to a camp no you, no I don't think you can I, I'd like to think you're more of a thinking person than that and well you hope so yeah, I'm a little yeah. conservative I'm a little uh, liberal and I'm somewhere independent and then sometimes I'm not in any of those camps okay, okay. and uh, that's sort of like being a little bit country and a little bit rock and well, roll or, you're or just you, something of everything or right? you never get off the darn fence you know oh, there you go yeah well I I, I think that's um, that's one of those things that you you really have to decide for yourself I mean actually the other day we were in here we had the TV up and uh, and my Pandora um, a list all the all the album or the okay. uh, groups and okay. different things were on the list and and it's all over the map it's classical Excellent. it's Excellent. jazz it's rock it's you know it's got a little bit of everything okay. in there okay. and I, I i made the comment to uh to dan to say you know this is kind of like a little personality profile hmm. that uh yeah because you you can't just say, oh i only like this sort of music and nothing else i mean when is that gonna do you know anybody that is like that that likes one genre? Yes. No, most people I know are sort of eclectic. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they've lived so doggone long. They've <laughs> been through a lot of eras. They've been through the 60s, the 70s, the big hair 80s, the alternative the 90s. Hair. Oh, and thrown in some disco and hip hop. And by the way, what's happening now, who knows? But it's a little everything, okay. right? Okay. Throw a little rap, a little yeah. urban. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. I can, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. So that, that may be some sort of profile for you around music. Well, that's only in one category of entertainment, and this is the things you like like is sometimes you want to be a little country you want to be a little rock and roll whatever it is right. you kind of okay. move to and you should have freedom to do that why not i mean what is it with this boxing people in is it just because i can place you in that pigeon hole there now i know more about you and i can dismiss you probably or i really don't have to learn anything about you right i can say well you're all the same Put you in that box. Right. <laughs> You're all like, Oh, yeah. by the way, let's let's do not, for goodness sakes, have a conversation. Oh, where no. you no, no. listen and appreciate what someone else is saying. Why would I do that? I put Why you in a I? box. I know how you are. I know how you think. You're all the same. <laughs> That's right. It's easy, right? It's it's an easy way to approach the well, it, approach the situation. You never have to think. You know, I, I've got my you know categories. I can put you into one, and boom, there well, you are. Well, thinking is hard, and it burns calories. Okay. And wow, you know, <laughs> if you're going to do that, calories. you might as well go to the gym. You might right? as well, or pull out your phone. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah. This I think we're coming to uh, here. Are three uh, old boomer types uh, <laughs> that's complaining about the rest of the world. So we may be actually committing the crime that we're pointing the finger at with others i don't know but, if that's but true are or not. We, i thought we were being more analytical just kind of looking at it and saying you know why do you do that why do we categorize people why do we throw them into boxes because we don't want to know them we don't right. really want to get close to them or we just simply don't want to take the time I, you know, it may be something about time, I think, in there, because okay. we, uh, okay. we, we we talked about everything's kind of in fast motion now that we – and this began a, a while back when people were um, looking at research on – or, well, the research 
on websites, for example, that yes. they begin to look at how long you stayed on the website. You know, back in the day, here we go, <laughs> that uh, the page loaded very slowly. Yes. And if about 10 seconds, 11 seconds, I'm, I'm going to the next thing. So, I mean, it, it, it has roots even further back than that. But the idea that our attention span is mm-hmm. so much shorter and the Internet has helped with that. Now, was that back when you had to tell everyone, you can't make a phone call because I need to use the phone line for dial-up? That, does anybody even know what I'm talking about? No. I don't. That's right. I don't. That's right. No. What is, what is that uh, cord? What's that what is that cord? That, that, that's right. That string that's hanging on the back that's of your That's what I was phone. thinking about, that tone. Yeah. That People tone. don't even recognize no, that no, now. Yeah. Not, no. Yeah. One, one phone in the house. And, uh, you know, the comedians have made a lot of jokes about sure. that, you know, where somebody uh, they even talked about when people came over to visit that uh, back in the day, somebody knocked on the door and you had food already prepared in the refrigerator in case um, guests came over and you were welcome. Oh, great to see you come in. Now it's like somebody knocks on the door and you go, who's that? Be quiet. Everybody quiet. <laughs> Everybody. Nobody answer that. And uh, nobody, yeah, just turn the lights out. Maybe they won't. They won't know. So that's, that's one thing. But, I, yeah, your point is, I, and I think it has to do with this uh, short attention span, ADHD okay. society we're living okay. in. And, and also it's probably something to do with just the amount of information that we're having to process and manage. And I know we've we've talked about that before in different ways. But, we have. Um, we have. That, that – uh, that's an overload, so part of it is blocking out things that but, we don't have the energy to invest in. But we're blocking out people, and we're blocking out relationships. Yeah, and, you know, again, we're getting away from that. Can I throw out a contrarian point of view, though? Certainly. Because, I, I mean, I mean you could say, well, it's a short attention span, but maybe human beings are evolving. To Ooh, where a lot somewhere. of times we – we have said, you know, talking about neuroscience, well, you can't really multitask, that, That's right. that you're really uh, you're attending to one task at a time, just a lot of yes. tasks. If that is true, is it also, could it be true that human beings are evolving to where they can actually multitask because they can process information so fast? So ADD mm-hmm. is an advantage. A desired this, trait? A desirable mm-hmm. trait in this yes. high tech, high data environment we live in. Can I call BS? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. Okay, here we I'm go. Just he, it I mean, he, he introduced it that it. way, yeah. so yeah, you yeah. can counter that, yeah. maybe. You know, and, and, and I hear what you're saying. I yeah. understand all that, but I don't think that we can evolve that quickly. And I think instead we have this trait that we always look down upon. Yeah. And now we're saying, well, maybe that is desirable. Maybe it's an advantage. So it's not an evolutionary thing. It's always been there. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the evolutionary thing moves very slowly. That's what I was always led to believe. Yeah. And that there were two types of people in this world. Uh Uh-oh, here we go. You had the uh, hunters and you had the farmers. And the hunters are your ADHD type people. And your farmers are the ones that can lay back and watch the crops grow. Okay, we you've just managed to do exactly what we were talking about just a few minutes ago, categorizing, categorizing and putting people, people. in the boxes yeah, yeah. over there. But yeah, I think we have to do some of that to understand what's going around us. We have to sort of uh, categorize and put things in the ways that we can understand it. But yeah, the, the the whether the brain has evolved enough to process all that information, I think we actually talked about that with uh, Abraham George, okay. an IT okay. expert okay. and consultant, was in, was in the studio. Um, that uh, my question was, uh, maybe our brains have not developed enough to be able to to take in all of this flood, okay. really okay. flood of information. So this is maladapting. Yes, we're trying to adapt to it in some way. Yeah, so yeah. I think Tom's right on the, yeah. on this idea that that uh, yeah. it's so much information around. You've got to do something with it. So you're gonna how much of it are you dismissing and putting in the channel to read sure. and and view sure. as opposed to I don't care about that. And so um, and and I think we do that on a daily basis. 
And that gets into the bigger issue that we were talking about prior when we were having uh, coffee. Okay. Hoping to meet the Ledger Inquirer people, yes. uh, which we didn't get a chance to do. Because they're uh, so welcoming. I just wanted to say Okay. That. There we go. I was saying they did not have a sign. They did not welcome. There was a closed table, it looked like they to had, me. On that. Table, now, the Ledger but... Inquirer, for folks listening who don't live in Columbus, That's correct. is our local newspaper. Pulitzer Prize winning newspaper, which yes. is now online. Which is now a Uh-oh. pamphlet form, which is a lot like the church bulletin. <laughs> you know, okay, there we go. So, I guess I'm we, not critical. <laughs> no, no. Just, uh, but, but that's, that's – So you a, don't think that's, that's okay. evolving either, right? Uh, I think it's decaying, <laughs> if you want to know. Devolving. But, but isn't it – isn't it, it, I think – all right, so we're, we're making fun a little bit, but we're really critical at the same time. I think uh, there may be something to this idea that – you're going to be excluded in certain groups with certain people because sure. you don't fit in to what they can handle, manage in some ways, or your opinions. When we, this is the thing I was right. about to bring up, the right. notion that we're in camps, we're in tribes, um, and only, you're fed your information that fits with your beliefs that you have, hold already, the confirmation bias issue, Okay, that uh, that's how we've done that. And we don't look at the other camps and listen to what they are talking about because it competes and uh, uh, with with what we believe which is pretty sad because sounds if you like it don't take the time to understand what the other side believes in they truly remain the other side you know and so I think that's an issue I recently heard the term boat elite oh and I'm academic not, what? elite you have the boat elite and you have the academic elite oh really and we would fall in the academic elite because we're educated even if I have a boat uh, but we're talking people, you know, you have the <laughs> no, bass boat, you have the, you know, the people that have the toys like that, okay. but don't have okay. the education. Okay. And, and it puts a certain group's thinking in a box and it really right. does it. Again, it categorizes, it polarizes people. But what it says is when you have the boat elite, they're the old salt of the earth type folks, the people that defend a friend till the end, you know, they'll fight for you. Um, no matter how wrong you are, you're my friend, so I'm going to fight for you. Right, And, right. Uh, you know, what do we have in common? Well, we don't have the education, and we don't read, and we don't analyze, but we've got boats, and we hunt together, and we fish, and that's our group. Okay. And so if okay. someone's in our group, we're going to defend the heck out of them. Right. Well, that sounds familiar just well, a little bit in terms of what we're talking about outside of here. Exactly. Okay. And one, one of the ways they were using this term is to look at it politically. Okay. If you're you accepted by the boat elite, it doesn't matter if you're wrong or not. You're my friend, and I'm going to defend you. Oh, and so, I, and so I've if you heard make that. stuff up, I'm going to defend you. I, I, I've actually seen examples in video and t- TV where uh, nothing's going to change my mind. Exactly. That's what they're proud to say. You can't change. You're, nothing's going to change my mind. And, uh, don't uh, wait a minute. There's a problem there, is there not? Don't confuse me with the facts, okay? Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, and then I want to go back around when we were talking about categorizing people. Right. You were trained to do that professionally. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was how mm-hmm. you You're were brought. You're pointing me out here. And, and I am. I I'm mean, that's put how he's calling, calling you out. out. He's calling uh, you he's out. He's calling me out. Well, he called listen. me out. Now he's calling you out. <laughs> that's yeah. why Jeff's got got to have a show. Well, he he's a contrarian. Can I put him in a box? How about that? Now take Here that to go. the bank. See, okay. No. Uh, next thing you know, I'll have out the DSM five. Here's Jeff. You know, there's a little little picture. You know. Yeah, well, well, we I, do. I, we do function. have the psychopath list out there. You know. Oh, that's right. Hey, did you see the from the psychopath? Path show we had the talking points. Oh, no, yeah, I yeah. There. I can, whether you're one or whether you want to become one, we got the we got and the. And there's facts some real positives here. on that. Look at Tony Soprano. Right? <laughs> That's right. Well, right. He, right. Well, I, I, you can't get away from categorization, but there are lots of problems with categories. Okay. Okay. First yeah, of all, yeah. no one falls into exactly in a category. You boundaries, people. Well, certainly. All certainly. those kind of things when you try to make that that uh, uh make it real, but. I think we have to do that in certain ways to understand the information, to be able to process information. If okay. we're just wide open and everybody's in one giant group, there's no distinction. So we have to do something along those lines. Does that go along with the thinking when you think everything's good? You never really know what's good, what's bad, what's fair, what's because it's it's all good. Yeah, it's kind of liking everything. Yeah. So yeah. everything that comes along. We yeah, have some folks in our good. family that watch, uh, watch movies a lot. They go to the movies a lot. And I'll say, well, what about that movie? What did you think? It was good. It was good. 
that's the end of the conversation. All good. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the, what you're talking yeah, about. There. Exactly. Just don't have it. Well, these are these are these are big issues. And we started talking about uh, being in uh, the boomer generation and whatever particular millennials, Gen X, Gen Z, so forth and so on. They have all these characteristics. Another form of <coughs> categorizing people so that we can understand it, at least in some ways, right or wrong. Right. Right. We can at least have some understanding of it. And I like what you said there. So we can understand them or attempt right. to understand them better, not to put them in a box. Well, uh, to, that, that may be the the big issue you just yeah. touched on is that, okay, once we do that, we've dismissed them. Mm-hmm. And that way we don't have to hear what they have to say. We don't appreciate that. We don't value their voice uh, and opinions. And we can move on with our daily lives. It sounds kind of tragic, does Rather it Rather than looking at it as, now I know where you're coming from. Right. So when you make those statements, I can understand what's the basis there. Well, there has to be a balance, too, because categori- <clears throat> categorization is natural, right? I mean, that's the yeah. way the yeah. brain understands data. When you right. we take Fight it for or granted, flight, too, the same or, way. Or, or, you know, is there the prey or predator. predator. About the, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there, there's got to be a balance, and, and the balance is somewhere along the line that we know that what we're looking at is not necessarily reality, but we are categorizing, so we have some frame of reference, mm-hmm, but at mm-hmm. the same time, keeping enough curiosity to find out what may be there. That's a that's yeah. a balancing act. Maybe I'm sitting on the fence a little bit where we were talking about that earlier. <laughs> well, no, today. I didn't know that. Maybe may- you should sit on the fence more. I mean, I don't yeah. mean you as a person, right. but all of us. Yeah. So we can look at both sides. Yeah. Well, listen, it's about learning. I mean, uh, there's this openness to learning um, category um, in the, the five key psychological positions i think okay. we talked about that just a little bit okay. uh, jordan peterson uses it but psychologists have used it throughout the years and one of the categories okay mm-hmm. here we go mm-hmm. okay uh is this openness to new learning just openness to sure. any kind of information coming in versus being closed and where you fit on that continuum okay and i think for us maybe at least the three of us or we're kind of open to new information and i'll consider somebody's opinion even if i disagree with well, that and, and isn't that really what it's about yeah one thing i, I always noticed about mike and uh i'm gonna say something nice about you mike so that's really unusual during the podcast <laughs> i'm usually uh, uh taking is, a condu- is this but, being recorded yeah i okay, know so. so so one of the things i noticed about you early on is that you really do have an open mind and uh are able to look at multiple sides, even oh, when you. things work to your detriment sometimes. Yeah. So, but, but, but is <laughs> that because of your your training as a therapist, or is that just the way you are naturally, or what do you think? Well, uh, thank you for that. Uh, those kind of words. I am not always open, uh, so I got my strong opinions and don't cross that line kind of thing. But because I'm a boomer after all, but <laughs> but but, I, but but being open, I think, is is about really a discovery process, and I I think uh, learning is a big source of what uh, I think our job is on the planet. So, and and uh, yeah, you, you the the more you know, kind of so to speak, from the uh, from the television network. Mm-hmm. But um, it, the more informed you are, the better decisions you're going to make. And there's some logic behind it in certain ways. But thank you for the compliment. I appreciate that. Well, and you you said well, sometimes I have strong opinions, and I and I do that. But you don't voice them that often. Right? No. You listen more. Right. And, yeah. and, and take it in and say, yeah. you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, the, and that, that's a therapist, I, th- I think, coming out at yeah, times. That, and, that, yeah. That's some training because yeah. I think there is just the idea of listening is so valuable to us. And I think that's one of the ways that we're going to get through this tribalism and where we're at now in our pol- politics and in our world in general that somebody's got to listen to the other side a little bit, don't you think? Man, that's the point. I yeah. think, I think yeah. that, of this whole discussion, that's the point. Do you got to listen. Yeah. You know, a lot of this revolves around language, too. You, you know, we were talking about maybe uh, uh, th- this is sort of a tribal approach to media and communication. But if you, if you look at the different different types of communication or different channels, different different approaches, they all have their own language. And mm-hmm. to me, right. I, yep. I think it goes back to to having been an English major back in the day, but the, the idea that 
boy, wouldn't that make a great study to look at the words that are used on each of these media outlets and and then analyze it from that that way. That would be kind of a neat thing. Yeah, I think yeah. one of our lights just uh, dimmed during your your conversation there, Tom. I don't know if it directly had an uh, – it, it went out because you were saying something I, that it I didn't like. That. But I yeah, that right away. I paid but, attention. <laughs> No, but right uh, but but that do, that does make sense. That there, there, um, there there is a particular language that and and um, the verbiage, but but the definition of words may have multiple meanings that you're conveying to the other group, and or to your group, and they understand the outside group maybe doesn't understand. Certainly, and it's, and Certainly. it's become more more intentional too because everyone has spin and everyone has talking points so if you're approaching something you utilize the talking points and the spin that gets your message out there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh makes it it sort of contributes to this whole idea that if you listen or look at one channel for instance on television or whatever that uh that you're going to get one point of view because it's all tied to that set that language yeah right? and that's sure. that confirmation bias because it's almost as if it's the opposite of being open and listening is mm-hmm. that i just need to have someone confirm my beliefs are okay or at least in my group and i don't have to pay attention to anyone else in that you know, Jeff, you said earlier today when we were having coffee that uh, that this has always been the case. There's always been like the uh, when you were growing up, the liberal newspaper, the conservative oh, yes, newspaper. Yes, you yes. read them both to right. get to find a balance. Yes, I did. Yeah. And, and, you know, we don't have that as much anymore. Yeah. And that was the cool thing when you were in a town that had two dailies. <laughs> right. Know, and, and right. I really enjoyed it. Um, now people pick their station and that's what they listen to or that's what they watch or they, you know, follow right. one online paper, one source. And, yeah. and you see that too much. And, but, I, and I think it goes back to what you said. We don't want to listen. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, well, I was, and I was yeah. taught back years ago, when I listen, I have the advantage. When I speak, you do. Ooh, that's a wow. very Talk interesting idea. Wow, about that a little idea. bit. That is an interesting thing. You know, and, and that was something I, back therapy training. Uh-huh. There you go. You know, and it really was. It was back, you know, back in my social work days and uh, when I was trying to become an administrator. And as an administrator, you learn more when you listen to your people and not tell them what to do. Well, Tom, that's, that's just good leadership skill, is it not? Well, you know, that's... It should be, shouldn't it? I mean, but I'm not so sure that's what's happening right now. Right. That right. there's a lot more telling, a lot more talking, and a lot less willingness to listen. I, I mean, at least that's the way I perceive it. Uh, there's know, a trend toward that then in, in the ways that I, I, we're I moving, at least in the political side of I, things. It just right. seems to me like right now uh, everyone has talking points. So that, <laughs> that oh, By I'm the way, going, is there any listening points well, out I, there? I, I was, has anybody got a listening point? Yeah. Uh, I was thinking but, uh, of um, Nielsen's. Everybody's talking at me. Wow. Can't right. hear a word they're saying. Yeah. Can't hear yeah. a word they're saying. Right? Yeah. You know, and wow. that's kind of where it's wow. going. Yeah. I mean, every, yeah. everybody's shouting out something to you. Right, right. But we're not listening. Wow. I but the don't getting know. back to the separation yeah. in terms of media and so <laughs> forth, uh, you, you were talking about there's two dailies in the, your community and you could read those. Uh, you know, it seems like the, the whole thing, the media is biased and this and that, that's supposed to be some kind of big revelation. Oh, yeah. when, when I think back to the to the Hearst newspapers and those kinds of things oh, sure. we studied about in history class. Yes. And, uh, you know, they all had their points of view, too. Mm-hmm. And if you go mm-hmm. back and look at the political cartooning from the 1800s, say, you go, wow, boy, that's pretty doggone vicious. Oh, you, yeah, it was right. in your face. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Went so, yeah. after people, yeah. really, yeah. in a so, way. Yeah, so it's not, it's not necessarily that it's, that it's new, but it mm-hmm. may be that it's – there's so many different options that it's almost uh, it's uh, exponentially increased. You know, in other words, there there are so many different niches that that deliver uh, 
news to, to us? Well, I, I'm kind of finding that we, we do have more diversity. We're aware of diversity. We're aware of the differences with people. We have the Internet. And so as a result of that, we've got more information than we've ever had before about other people, about their other beliefs and so forth. And yet we find ourselves into this uh, zero and one to mm-hmm. bi- binary mm-hmm. sort of division in our country right now. I think it mainly due to politics. It seems to be that's the one source of it for sure uh, that gets amped up by these news networks that are out there that are catering to one side or to the other side. And w- wouldn't you think that if we have more and more information that we'd had multiple sides, that we would have more than just you have to be in one camp or the other? Well, you know, that may be true, but I'm being the cynical guy that I'm just, I am. It's wishful being thinking. Being the cynical not... guy that I am, I think <laughs> sometimes we like it this way because if we can never get together, right. then we can never really talk to power. Huh. I mean, we can never really make the man pay attention. We can't call people out because you and I are fighting for scraps and we're, we're on our sides and we're never going to get together. And aren't and, we and, better and, off divided that way if... I mean, well, not, we're, not we're, really, but I mean... No, I see something in, in, the, in what you're saying in terms of just safety. If I'm in this group and in this club, and like you were talking about a moment ago, we'll stand up for each other, then I don't really need to go beyond those boundaries. And uh, I'm safe, and it's okay for me to express the, the, the opinion and, uh, of the group. You know, in other words, wait a minute, what if you as an individual decide, well, I don't like that particular tenant or that particular guideline of our group. I'm not, I'm going to oppose that. Oh, what happens then? It sounds like that's trouble for you. Well, what about the notion that two sides got together and said, you know, our government's not working. Mm. Our democracy's not working. Yeah. Maybe we need to change things. But aren't the people in power better off saying, okay, we got camps, they never get together, they fight amongst themselves, they leave us alone, we do what the heck we want, we make lots of money, Well, and nobody's the wiser. Yeah, see, and I think you just brought up money. Uh, you kind of threw that in It's there. always money. <laughs> it's, it, it does kind of come back to, to money. I mean, politics and the, um, the whole Supreme Court decision about uh, allowing corporations to be people and right. all those other things uh, that has happened. And you can't uh, go up for an office unless you've got millions of dollars, right, or supporters for and, sure. and funding oh, yeah. for those kind of things. So it's no way the average guy who may have – um, really uh, a positive uh, and a collective understanding of both of the groups and trying to bring people together, mediate things, that guy's not going to show up. Oh, uh, he can't. Because he can't afford to. Yeah. <laughs> the price of admission is too high. It's yes, too indeed. high. Yes. In well, you know, that whole idea of division, and uh, it goes to the divided we fall kind of yes. concept. Yes, yes. But if you look at really successful leadership, typically those really successful leaders were – were people who surrounded themselves with a lot, a lot of talent, yes, and sort of yes. coordinated yes. that talent, yes. but allowed the talent to do what they do. And you look at the the real famous innovations. The the one I, I always like to go back to is the Apollo innovation, where you had a a space capsule floating around and astronauts in danger of being killed, and a bunch of guys at NASA got together and threw everything in the capsule on the table and came up with a fix that was successful sure well that's that takes a lot of uh for the leader to sort of remove himself or herself from that situation and allow the talent to work i'm just not sure that's what we're doing right now and it, perhaps at least in the u.s we're in danger of losing our competitive edge because of that maybe. but isn't that true yes. leadership and management I, I mean, to, to let the talent do their job well, you, you, you provide you, resources. I've heard that a lot, yeah. is that if you're a good leader, then you're going to hire or bring up a good um, – the people who have great talent and skill and ability, and you're going to get out of their way and allow them to do their thing, and we're all going to kind of succeed in that way. I'm not sure always if it's just one person making decisions and uh, dismisses everyone else that we're going to have a chance at fixing some things. Something on the order of – when you have a good leader, people say, look what we did. Yeah, that's right. Not yeah, look what yeah. you did, but look what we did. 
it's hard to have a good band if everybody doesn't contribute musically. Well, somebody feels <laughs> left out, somebody doesn't play, somebody gets mad, doesn't show up for the rehearsal you mean that long guitar solo that never ends i know that guy i know that guy i knew the guitar joke would come in there somewhere sorry about that all the guitar players out there yeah uh, Yeah. it's sort of like the old story how do you get a guitarist to stop playing put music in front of them right (laughs) you know that's the old guitar joke but yeah uh, yeah so well we talked about uh, a number of things uh, so far in our our uh, talk today and i love these conversations because um it's good to have some contrarian in in the com- conversation as well as uh, folks who are uh, paying attention and want to get things done. But, hey, there's a lot going on. We just don't – what kind of information do you guys get? I mean, are, Jeff, you said something about you listened – you had the two newspapers. Right, but do you right. Are you listening to different sides of the current news and that kind of thing? What? How do, how do you sort through it? What's your kind of routine for it? Believe it or not, I don't listen to both sides. Okay. I'm an avid NPR listener. Okay. It's on at my house from the moment I wake up until about early evening. Yeah. And okay, well, it's been I, good talking to you, Jeff, and we'll uh, see you next there's time. There's his open-mindedness we... coming coming in. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I like to think they're probably the most factual out there, and so I just take it in and I process based on that. Wow, and and, uh, and this is something that um, and I'm glad to hear you say that because uh, you know I sent you guys a clip of one of a famous podcast and a, and a reporter right, on that right. talked about uh, this idea of uh, taking taking things from both sides and now that the, and what they did in the in the in the quick clip that I sent you was that they were talking about how we used to get news and the person deci- the the citizen decided for themselves what was how it was mm-hmm. and if they needed more mm-hmm. information and now that's no longer the case there's just no factual here's the news you decide uh, place to go and it's all about opinions and it's it's kind of that editorial thing where we're telling you what your opinion what should, you should be believe. yeah yeah, see, yeah. Uh, that's wrong in so many ways right well and i don't see that with npr I yeah. see them, you know, just throwing as many facts out there. And in fact, at times, I think sometimes they're a little too much to the right for me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I think they've worked very hard to be as middle of the road as they can, to be so as to... moderate as they can. And so they keep bringing in a lot of opinions from people that are from the right. You know, right, and, right. And again, right. you know, that's kind of being and, balanced. And that's, fine. And, and that's what they're trying to do. It's it's not like Fox with the fake true you know balanced news this is yeah, what i think balanced. they're really trying to do is balance the news and that's where i get my information i also read the new york times online every day okay uh i of course read the columbus ledger inquirer uh because, okay you know, it would have been nice to meet some of those it folks. it would have been yes. great but you know i could take things off the wire services as well as anybody so you know <laughs> and so but I, that's where i try to get my news and and again okay. i have a very liberal slant but that's where i come from okay you know? yeah. all right well it uh, that's that's uh well, well, you're honest about it straightforward about that and uh, um I, I assume that i've never heard npr be called right on the side of the right oh, side of this thing, I, that that blows my mind a little bit. But they're they're trying. That's the attempt to trying to be. Yes, they're put, trying to uh, balance. Be balanced. And so, um, yeah, you have to appreciate both sides of this to make a informed decision. Don't you have to have as much information as possible to make a good decision? Well, that's what we were taught. That you need right. as much information as possible to make a decision. Um, I think Tom brought up the best point today when he was saying, you're not getting facts, you're getting opinions. And it's where you're getting your, you know, which side. And so that's, that's kind of how I saw it. Um, if you're an intelligence analyst, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. All then right. you're going to want to get as many sources of information as you can. Let's say yes. you worked for the yes. CIA right. and you were an analyst there and you were looking at all the newspapers from around the world. Certainly. You realize you're getting a lot of propaganda, but somewhere in there you're going to see some patterns and commonalities emerge. And in order to build an intelligence briefing for, you know, whatever politician or the National Security Council or whatever, you have to come up with some patterns that's your best guess. Oh, yeah. And so to me that openness gives you the best chance and nothing's perfect right but it gives you a good chance whereas if you just pick one set of information geez 
you're sort of tied to whoever wrote it, right? Well, it was, uh, and, a, and another issue is you could be dead wrong. That's right. And you, you put that information out there. And it, it seems to me that one, uh, this is the downside of politics. Yes. Uh, when somebody's in the leadership and they don't want to hear something that's cohard truth, just the facts, and because it, do, it doesn't fit with what they want to believe, and they need to make policy and do something else based on their own opinion or feeling sure. about sure. what it should be as opposed to those in the facts. But that's kind of scary to me. I, I just don't understand where this is going to end if this continues to go in the way it's going. You know, the upside to this, though, is what? is the whole idea is, is we've been in, engaged in this experiment in enlightenment democracy, republic kind of approach. Okay. okay. It's a complex, uniquely uh, beast that we've created in the United States. So we're going to have an opportunity now to find out if it's if it works. It yep. worked. Oh yeah, yeah. It yeah. worked through the Civil War, and it worked through World War Two and World War One and the Cold War. And so we're going to find out if in this era we that what we take for granted is the best form of government ever. Okay. If it really is the best form of government ever. Now, are there issues? Yeah, there are issues. But I, I'm still sort of optimistic. I can't believe that everyone who goes into politics is just this negative, uh, right? You know, oh gosh, no, psychotic, no, you know, <laughs> no. You know, but we right now the rhetoric is is very very heated. Yes, but it's not as heated as it was in the 1860s when <laughs> okay. millions of people died. Over yes, it yes, in yes. Good, good point. So, good point. So uh, you know, it's another era, and uh, I, I'm sort of optimistic. But yeah, yeah, it's a. You're right. It's a very interesting time, and it's because of some of these issues we're talking about. May you live in interesting times. Isn't that the ancient curse, right? <laughs> yes, indeed. And, and that's where we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, but and I, I think that's a great point. And, and we're going to see, you know, what do we really have here? How right. strong are we? That's right. And, and that's not a bad thing. Nope. Yeah, equal and opposite uh, reaction kind of a yeah, notion yeah, there. Yeah, kind of. Um, so, yeah, I think that – and if Dan, uh, Dr. Dan Rose was here, he would talk about Zizak uh, at this point in time and because his writings as a philosopher, a uh, little Marxian, but, but still the philosopher would say that we needed this to get us to the next stage. In other mm, words, we have mm, to have yeah. this. Wow, that's pretty uh, yeah. yeah, that, that yeah. to me is like he's really sort of – helping us predict what what this is and to go with your point too tom that um let's be an optimist because we need to go this far to one side Certainly. in order to come back to somewhere in the middle but isn't that natural also yeah that this we we're going to grow from whatever happens that's right whichever way it goes right that's i mean right. that's kind of the natural evolution to use that term again it takes a uh at least that takes an elevated point of view that that uh you know the whole idea of uh of the arc of justice and all that trending upward. And uh, if we believe that, then these are growth pangs or growth pains or whatever. Yeah. yeah and, and it's certainly Tom, you and I have talked about uh, Pinker and his book about how wonderful everything is getting. It's so much better now than <laughs> yeah, it has been. We don't been. believe it. Right. And the, but we, right. we still yeah, resist right. it. But the idea there's less people killed, there's less wars, we have better health, we're living longer, we're financially better. We're uh, All of the things that he listed in his book is that we're getting better. But it's a trend that doesn't uh, sort of hit you in the face sure. and, and is present for you in some ways that it that it uh, you have to look at it in a in a bigger picture that these trends are sort of slow but they're moving in the right direction and maybe we need a course uh, correction here as you guys were talking about what was the the last quote I just heard the futures here mm-hmm. is just not evenly distributed mm-hmm. oh that's interesting that's yeah. Yeah, and that's I thought, a good you know one. Yeah. That kind of fits. Wow. Yeah. That's heavy. Yeah. yeah. It really yeah. is. Well, that gets into another problem, though. I'm sorry. But okay. uh, the idea that uh, the, the one percenters of the have and have nots and that new technologies, and this is something I've read a little bit about, the notion that uh, you may have access to this new up-and-coming 
technology and be able to afford it and okay. put it into play in your life. Uh, but there's a lot of folks that are not going to have it. It's like having the internet, not having the internet. It's like all of those kinds of advancements in our society that uh, it's not equally distributed. No, it's and not. Uh, what are we going to do about that? And you can look at all of these categories, whether it's technology, whether it's uh, substance, food, medicine, uh, medicine, uh, uh, healthcare, all of those <laughs> yeah. kinds of things. And I think, uh, yeah, there's something that, that that's the work to be done probably in the bigger picture that we allow um, for folks who don't have to have those those opportunities. What did your mom say? It's never fair, right? Right. It's yeah. never fair. We don't all get the same. Yeah, we we don't live in a fair world. Yeah. Who who told you that this world was going to be fair? How many I times did one. you hear that growing up? Right. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of where it is. Um, well, let's let's go further into this whole notion, though, about the future and technology. And is it only for the wealthy, or do other people catch up? Well, it, it, this is a big topic, uh, but, but I like this topic. And, and uh, again, Dan and I were talking about this, and he asked me, he was talking about Zizak, okay. and, and basically saying that there's no end to capitalism, that we can see uh, the, this is a quote, or, or paraphrase, I guess okay. I should say, that uh, we can see the end of the world in all these apocalypse movies and zombies <laughs> and sure so but we can't ever see the end of capitalism. Hmm. which I found to be an interesting thing. Even though in the zombie world, they're looking and uh, consuming and right, kind of continue. Right. But, but so that that's a part of, I think, being able to um, adjust to uh, a, a different, really a different worldview, a more science fiction worldview. Because he asked me the question, do you see in, any examples of where people, where there's fairness, there's not this consumerism, there's not all of these things? And I first thought came up was with Star Trek. You know, a uh, cup of Earl Grey, please, uh, and the computer spit the, uh, the tea. Uh, but that we're in we, when there's no real uh, haves and have nots, and it's kind of equally distributed. Now, that's science fiction, of course. It, it certainly is. But but that is kind of an example of where you're what you're you're beginning to talk about there. It is you know technology going to be the equalizer? It has certainly created some equalization in terms of what you're able to do. Like okay. if you want okay. to publish yourself, okay. you can be self-published, and then you're out there in the the crucible of ideas, and you either live or die based on that. But but you because of technology, virtually anyone can publish. Certainly, you know, or start their own podcast, or I mean, start through do a okay. podcast, create a have an album, Here, perform, here's, you know, get your art right. out there, all those kinds of things. Uh, at the same time, uh, every new technology costs a lot. And yes. if you don't have the resources yes. to be involved in that, you've got to wait for the cost to come down. But well, you know what? It, it always seems to come down. Well, you know? let's look at yeah, that little true. device that's right true. in your hands right, right. now. Yeah. I don't know anybody that doesn't have that little device. We're talking about his phone. Right. Yeah. Everybody has that's one. That's right. I was walking here today. And I was talking to this guy, looked like a homeless fellow. Okay. And, and of course, all of a sudden, his phone went off. And he pulled out his phone. And I thought, yeah, maybe that's part uh, maybe of that you know, not, equalizer. Uh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that there's a part of Technology, as you said, as it gets cheaper, there, there's more some, and more people can embrace it. There's right? something to, to be said for creativity in this thing, too. So if we equalize that technology to a certain extent and your person has a phone and he right. can look up things and that – phone has more computing power than it took to go put a man on the moon, as they right, say, is right. a common reference with that, that uh, we're going to have some innovators. We're going to have some people that we didn't think could come up. It's sort of the new Elon Musk okay, types okay. that are out there to be able to use this and look at technology in a new way and then kind of you know, go to the next level um, with the, the innovation because we've just got creative people. Sure. And they're, they're able to kind of see things in a different way uh, that moves innovation forward. Will it develop creativity? 
I don't know if you can in, – in, uh, that's a good question. Can, do you have creativity coming in? Do you develop it? Uh, it's sort of like empathy. Do you have empathy or you, can you get and grow empathy? Those kind of things are big, big questions. But they I'd are. like to think that there's – that, that uh, enough information and uh, providing enough resources for for kids, for example, and people coming up, that they can do some things with it that we never thought about. And that's true with our technology generation, those who are digital natives, that's right. so to speak. Well, and, and then the question of can you, know, do, can you develop creativity is kind of like, can you develop intelligence or is it just there? It was the old argument we always had when we looked at the uh, theory of intelligence. It's, right. it's, it's, it's the a, chicken or the egg. Is it a factor that's <laughs> out there? Well, or see, here's, can you develop it? Here's, here's the other question. It depends on what you define, how you define intelligence. Okay. In okay. other words, in uh, education, we always talked about the whole idea of the IQ. Yes, that yes. When, uh, when Binet developed that, yes. that idea, it was never his intent to categorize people as high and low IQ. No. It was a uh, tool to do certain things educationally and to treat certain individuals. Well, it was to look at thing. people with intellectual disabilities and right. identify them That's for right. services or exclusion, whatever. Okay. <laughs> so right, so when, you look at it, when you look at the idea of creativity mm -hmm. or you look at the idea of intelligence, these things that are sort of hard, kind of amorphous, hard to excuse me. Uh, that device. Somebody right. call it to check into my. Uh, yeah, somebody we didn't like it. We have a caller like on the line. We, we did. <laughs> so, well, we've used that one before, but uh, yeah, I think that that's technology uh, ringing the doorbell there. All yeah. right, but so getting, go ahead. Getting back to the whole idea of intelligence or creativity, yeah. the the idea that it uh, intelligence and creativity depend on application. In other words, if uh, you drop me into a city. Okay. With no money okay. and no resources, can I survive? Sure. Well, there are some individuals that will survive very well yes. because they have a certain kind of intelligence. Certain. I'm not sure that would be my kind of intelligence <laughs> in the same way that if you uh, gave me a, uh, uh, you know, a rifle and a, you know, a, a set of MREs and dropped me in a jungle somewhere, would I live or die there? Certainly. Well, again, uh, it depends on a certain kind of creativity, a certain okay. kind of intelligence. Okay. So uh, by the same token, uh, there, there are places where I might thrive. So a lot of times it, when we're trying to figure out how to, how to teach kids, for instance, right. are you really, by giving them better tools, are you really increasing intelligence? You know, it, now, as far as performance on an IQ test, maybe not so much unless you teach them what's on the IQ test. I think you made a good point with the technology. Yeah. I really think you did. Um, the other issue is you sound like you follow the works of Gardner. Yes. With the multiple mm -hmm. intelligence. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a great theory. Yeah. But the problem we have with Gardner is, for one, we have no way of testing it. No, you can't test it. Well, so, you know, what utility does it have? Yeah. I mean, it's a nice, we can make each other feel good because you have strengths here and you have strengths here. And, <laughs> and, and that's wonderful. But... I don't see the practical application of Gardner as much as we should. Maybe. Well, you, you know, and, and Gardner, he, he, he never, again, like Benet, yes. he, never, uh, he never intended for his theory right. to be broken into surveys where I found out you're a kinesthetic, so <laughs> I better teach you totally kinesthetic. In fact, he, he, he refuses to talk about the intelligence. Yes. You know, yes. The, I, I was fun, it's funny, I was talking to some of the Harvard fellows from uh, Columbus who went up and met Gardner. Okay. And they said, if you ask him about multiple intelligence, it's off the table. He's on to other things. Well, you know? and, and that, and he was also talking about ability. Right. Natural ability. That's right. He, sure. He, he wasn't the one that was trying to put it into the boxes. Right. He right. was saying we have all have skills. We all have abilities. So, so going back to education. Yes, and maybe, technology and tools. And, and uh, leadership, too. We've talked about that. The, the, the key is to optimize what each individual has, right? I mean, isn't that what the whole uh, – experiment of the United States is about is that everyone has abilities, everyone gets a chance according to what he or she can do, right? 
That's and the if, theory. And if you're preventing vote, it doesn't <laughs> no, happen, the but that's a good no, thought. No, it doesn't happen, no, but it's no. a prayer. It, it, it it's is, a prayer. It's the, it's the American prayer. I understand yeah, that. Yeah, that's good. Right, I, I'm yeah. glad you phrased it that way because yeah, that, that yeah. makes a lot more sense. Right. But, but when you first bring up that concept, no. we're, we're just not playing that game. It's just not working. No, no. Because no. right. we're not giving them the tools. Right. We're not giving them the opportunity. And we won't put money in it, for gosh sakes. That's right. You know, well, all of it seems to come at a very, very slow snail's pace in in some, as opposed to some breakthrough uh, or paradigm shift that okay. where all of a sudden there we are in this wonderful uh, moment in time where everybody has access. Well, that's what you guys <laughs> so. said about evolution is it, it is snail paced. It doesn't it doesn't subscribe to the coon idea of the paradigm shift right? so right, we're we're right, we're, uh, right. we're maybe Very debating good. coon today, yeah right? and by the way we're still uh dealing with folks who think the earth is flat yeah. okay so uh, and, and here no we are 2019 moon, right in the capital of the south states yeah so, so it's it's really a in- interesting time and these these ideas of um of uh, the technology moving, but there's so many different parts to this movement that have to all move at the same time to get us to this new paradigm. And uh, it's it's a breakthrough here, a breakthrough there. Technology's always been that way. Uh, you know, we want things faster. We want batteries to last longer. We <laughs> want to access lighter, all these smaller, things. Yeah. yeah, smaller, everything <laughs> like that. And uh, maybe we're moving in that direction too. And I think some of it. Uh, Science has really kind of pushed us to uh, begin to look at the ethics and the morals and why, what what should we do with this technology. And, and Jeff, this is something you talked about a long time ago, and I remember our conversations was like, okay, this technology is moving way ahead of our ability to manage and do the right thing with it. Exactly, and, and that's what I said is it's, it's beyond us. We're, we're not there, right. but it just keeps moving forward, and we're slowly following it along. And so it has capabilities that we can't even use, or if we do use them, we don't even know what we're doing. And, well, and, and, and that these, always bothers me. Yeah, the, and the new generations, we talked about the digital natives and yes, those kind of yes. things. So if the, the kids are coming up and, and uh, they're used to all of this level of technology that we have now and can manipulate it and work mm-hmm, with it, mm-hmm. and that gives them a platform to build on it and move forward. Too. Um, I, I want to go back, and I think maybe we are evolving okay technologically we just you don't see it that's the thing about evolution oh, you right. can't watch it say well you know i want to see a rabbit turn into a deer or, or something <laughs> like that you know i've been watching it now for 20 years and it hasn't grown another arm or a foot or you know so yeah it sounds it, it, a lot so like slow. what my dad always said about oh, evolution yes. you know he my dad was uh he was a scientist. He was a classicist. He'd studied Aristotle, too. And he said, you know, I, I know it's uh, evolution is a scientific theory, has a lot of basis, but I want one time to walk by a cage for, for somebody to tap and say, let me out, man, I've evolved. And so, <laughs> See, you know, and I was like, come on, Dad. That's a <laughs> basic misunderstanding yeah, of evolution. I, I know that you're gonna, he was being maybe, funny. Yeah. But, I know, <laughs> but maybe that's what's happening right now yeah. with the Could technology be. movement. Yeah. That, you know, we are evolving. It is evolving we just can't see it wow and, and you know? with a historical perspective maybe three or four hundred years down the road we would say wow that was critical yeah, well yeah. and and i guess the other thing is is it speeding up and we're just not recognizing that it's speeding up it's so in fast. yeah the the uh the book the shallows and the author was talking about how uh is um google and the internet basically point out to google but is, is it changing our brains mm, in other okay, words okay. are we surfing things faster we, we're looking through information faster and faster and, and is our brain uh, developing we're, we're you know the whole uh and tom you can talk about yeah, this but he, the, he the, these this neural uh, <laughs> uh um, nets that that are building new pathways to information and as we begin to scan more and more as opposed to the deep long reading that okay. we used to do and okay. submerging ourselves in the information that we're scanning it okay we got that piece of information now we're going to another and that's having an effect on our brain and it's building new neural pathways and so that we're now able to manage all this information but that evolution is just a little slower 
to for us to be able to recognize it, but it's happening in some ways sure. because we know people are scanning faster and moving and flipping and going to the next and next. What thing. you brought up earlier. Well, I, about, I was I was going to say we're we're right back to it, sort of how we started. It, it goes to uh, when you uh, a couple things first uh, the the idea that when I go to a movie now. A lot of times I can't comprehend what's going on. It's so quick. <laughs> but my son. Oh, that camera movement yeah, moving yeah, fast, yeah, buddy. I, it's presenting fast-paced images, and I don't. And and you're supposed to uh, pull them together and make some kind of amalgam out of it, and and have come out of the movie with an understanding. Sure. Uh, my son, youngest son, it's easy for him. And so the question I have for myself is it is it that I'm just not there, and he is because of mm-hmm. how we've grown or is it because I'm aging and my brain doesn't work as fast it could be <laughs> any of the two so that's it the first be. thing wow. the second thing is this idea of what we're doing today right you know the work of the college professor was to was to impart knowledge but also to work to create and New sure, knowledge is sure. either a scientist Absolutely. or a theorist. The scientist practitioner model. So, yes. yeah. so yeah. it occurred to me as you guys were talking about technology and how it's evolved, this experiment with podcasting that that Mike has sort of promulgated and and that our our whole television endeavor has evolved into. It it occurs to me that this is an experiment. In other words, oh, yeah. we came mm-hmm. in here mm-hmm. with a basic concept about the tribalization of media, right? And right. throw it on the table. Bring in three professors, two old retired professors, one currently working professor, <laughs> and Went bring on the road. <laughs> bring bring this idea in and nibble at it and shape it and see what happens with it. And by the way, we'd better record it because. If we just had this conversation down at Fountain City Coffee, we never remember what we talked about. And we never do. Right. Yeah, right. And, and, uh, yeah, and yeah, it is an experiment for sure. Yeah. And uh, the idea of recording is, is so you can share the conversation. Because I think so many other people need to be in on this conversation. Mm-hmm. I really want to hear more and more uh, and, and variety of people, diverse uh, population of people talking about these issues. Sure. Yeah. I mean, sure. that's the point of it. We're interested, but I got a feeling there are a lot of other people interested as I, well. I would agree. Um, I hate to do this to you, but I think we've come to a point where we're going to have to, you know, call it. Well, you know, um, Jeff, this is nothing new um, for <laughs> I'm used to wrapping you. up and, shows. Uh, <laughs> there, there was, uh, back in the day of the Education Forum, used to go to that break just so quick, right in the middle. But I, uh, oh, we got to well, take a break now. Well, it's time to take a break. So. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> No, listen, guys, it is probably lunchtime. We probably need to call an end to it. And so um, I do thank both of you for coming in in this conversation. So I love to hear your opinions about things. And you, I want to go back and listen to this and just understand. This, it takes me a while to process some things. Well, I can be in the moment, but i got to go back and think about these and, things. And maybe we can pull some things out and go over them further. Because I think there's some ammunition there. Well, you know, a lot of times we, I'll try to get uh, other folks on the podcast to, um, to summarize. Mm-hmm. Um, so as we end this time, if each of you, and I'll, I'll take a turn at it and, and a stab at it, could we, just one thing that you remember from this conversation that sort of stuck with you, and uh, I'm going to give you just a moment as I'm thinking about my own, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up for today. And uh, don't forget, we're at 1214 First Avenue here in Columbus, Georgia. It's Columbus Podcasting Studios, Columbus Media Group, and we're trying to uh, give people a voice and uh, give them a chance to talk about things they want to talk about. So look us up at Columbus podcasting.com and that's my commercial for the day okay, all right so one thing one big thing that you thought about today who wants to go first oh the one that sticks with me is jeff's idea about technology and is it really making things uh better from a an equality standpoint or not that that was really thought-provoking for me and i i i really i'd have to give that a lot of thought well hopefully yeah um, I, think, All right. I think the one I came away with is about the evolution of technology and how quickly it's evolving, and we're not maybe capable of seeing that. 
So evolution may be speeding up well, as we talk. Or evolution is just occurring and we just can't see it. We, it's not, we can't Because we're in it. it. You can't see the forest for the trees, kind of, you know, you're in it. So, Well, uh, final for me is sort of a process comment. I, I just wanted to say that you two guys are great to talk to and you have a wealth of information and knowledge. And when we get to do this, I think we all learn. And uh, this was just an example of what other people can do and get in and talk about these things that are kind of interesting. Maybe we don't know all the information that we need to have to, to put out this profound statement. But as long as we're having the conversation, uh, the more we're learning from each other. And uh, that, that idea of listening, Jeff, that you brought up, oh my goodness, uh, doesn't get any better than that. We need to listen and not have the talking points. And maybe we need to invent listening points. Maybe we can figure out how <laughs> to do that. I that when you said that, <laughs> listening points, yes. Hey, guys, thanks so much for being here. You uh, both are fantastic. And uh, here's what we'll do. We'll continue this conversation. We'll see you next time. <laughs>